So here's the thing. Uh, I can talk about open change for hours. But hopefully, we only have 30 minutes now, and we are going to have a, another hour later. So theoretically, if there were an uncertain question at the end of a talk, uh, you would still have the opportunity to send me a last-minute email tonight. So I can you know, just change a last-minute slide for tomorrow and include, I mean, if it was something that I can't answer on the fly, or I think we, can, we think it would help everybody else. OK, so we are going to get a general overview of what Zentual Exchange is. So if we just look at what an infrastructure server with Microsoft is, we have a, wind, a Microsoft Windows server with an Active Directory, centralized file server, and Microsoft Exchange server. So that is the global picture. We won't stand too much with it. Now let's see how we are going to replace it. I mean, what what is the solution now? So the promise here is that we are going to provide a Microsoft Exchange Server compatible solution that is working out of the box, which means that you don't have to install third-party connectors to get your Outlook working. It just talks natively the Microsoft Exchange protocols. And it's compatible with Outlook 2003, 2007, 2010, 2013, and 2000 blah blah, and 2000 blah blah, until uh, until, until, uh, until we don't know, until when. But at least it's already working with all of this solution. So all of this is based on truly open source technology. I mean, I can talk of it for hours. I'm going to talk 10 minutes about it uh, tomorrow. Uh, but just to, give you, uh, just to give you a pitch, that's a project I started back in 2003 when I was a young student and I was just looking not uh, how to change the world, but doing something that just did not exist. I mean, well, Exchange was existing, but an open source equivalent that was compatible with the server, that was not existing. So I say, hey, hey, uh, we're a student, uh, we don't need yet money, uh, we can afford doing that. Well, I didn't expect it took so much time, so well, here we are 10 years later. So yes, the technology exists. I mean, it didn't get out of the ground for the, during the last three months. It's already there for quite some time. It's just that we needed something to match at some point. We needed a combination of forces that made it possible to get out of the ground and take another dimension. And that is what we are going to talk about. So what is the underlying technology? Let's go a little bit deeper into the rabbit holes. So on one hand, we'd have Samba 4. Samba 4 is providing the DC RPC infrastructure. It's providing the endpoint mapper and all of the services. And obviously, it's providing the Active Directory. What it means is that it provides the rock-solid foundation that OpenChange needs to run uh, Exchange-compatible services. Without some before, it wouldn't have been possible to do this, this task in this amount of time. I mean, even a decade. I mean, a decade is a really long time. But still, it wouldn't have been possible because there were so many protocols, so many things that we would have need to be working on. But yeah, that would just not have been possible. So here we have this infrastructure, and not only the infrastructure, not only the server core, but also the DCR library for the clients. Because OpenChange in the very beginning was a, a, a mappy library for the client. And we've been working with a, with a novel guy in Bangalore to provide the GNOME evolution. Basically, if you install the evolution mappy, not, uh, uh, not, the, over, not the evolution exchange, but the evolution mappy, uh, it's based over libmappy. And so you have guys that have been working for, uh, for like two years on, on the project to provide, to provide a, a compatible client for the Linux platform. Then, hey, you have OpenChange. So what is OpenChange in this specific case? That is an add-on, that is a, a plug-in to Samba 4. Samba 4 has most of the technology. All the technology is always there. OpenChange is probably only providing the two person that was missing. And these two person are only the exchange compatibility and the exchange logic and the exchange services. But still, somebody had to write these two persons. And OpenChange has this modular architecture, which means that we have decided, I mean, from the very beginning, that was absolutely sure, no, we don't want to write another mail system. No, we don't want to write another SQL database. No, we don't want to write anything such, uh, anything like that. I mean, it does not make sense. There are great products out there, products that are using in production system that are just working. Hey, let's just use them. So we have implemented this 
back in glue. I mean, it's just like a glue. Open change is like a big glue. We are aggregating system together and making the translation, making the transition possible, making an outlook, making an outlook talk mappy and go directly to talk to a completely different system. But Microsoft even didn't even consider because they were not interested into that or they didn't see the potential into this kind of system. And so at the moment, what do we have? Well, we have the email support that is providing by either DevCode or either Cyrus or either an exam system or Postfix for the MTA part. So we are just relying on, on truly open source, reliable technology. About the databases, because we can't store anything into an IMAP store, we have databases where we are going to store all about the contacts, the calendar. This is providing, I mean, this stack of uh, email, uh, uh, email databases are providing by the Sogo backend, by which has been develop developed since 2010, and we have been working with them together. So the databases are used to store the contact, the calendar, the tasks. And next, we also have the, well, the Active Directory. Because obviously, when you are uh, using your Outlook, you need to access to the global address list. So you have your personal contacts that are stored into a database, and at the same time, you have the global address list where we are directly looking into the Active Directory and retrieving the list of users and providing it to you. And finally, because Outlook is doing crazy things, I mean, when we started in 2003, we were just looking at hexadecimal code. I mean, we were just looking at the wire and we're just looking at hexadecimal, looking for patterns, a bit like metrics, except that I was not Neo and uh, uh, I never took any pills. But still, I was drinking a lot of coffee, which probably helped to see a little bit of the metrics. But anyway, not the point here. The thing is that w Outlook is doing crazy things, just like it needs to have a local storage for internal use, and that is exactly what Microsoft said when we were asking questions after the 2008 when they opened the protocol and we got a hand onto it. Uh, we have just been looking at things and it was just like, hey, um, we've seen that on the, on the wire, Microsoft, is do, uh, uh, Microsoft Outlook is doing this. Uh, can you tell us what this property is for? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, this is for internal Outlook usage. You don't need to know what it does, um, you know, it just use it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we don't know what it does, but okay, let's just store it. So we need to have this uh, file storage backend on the file system because it didn't match to any known pattern. So we needed to have a way to store it uh, uh, rawly on the file system. So about this underlying technology, just a brief review. What we have at the moment, this is what we have really at the moment. It's PostFix and DevCode, both for SMTP and IMAP, PostgreS SQL database, and MySQL. I mean, in the, so in the version we provide with Zen Tool Exchange, it's a MySQL database. We have a file system and we have the Sogo libraries that are used as the open change backend. Now, let's take this a little further because that is something that I will probably won't have time to explain tomorrow because we have to go through lo a lot of different things. But let's see the potential here is that we are talking about storage backends, but we are not talking, we are not talking about only. Uh, only about uh, emails and uh, I mean about databases. Let's say that I'm a company and I have all my contacts that come from LinkedIn. Well, okay, LinkedIn provides a social connector for Outlook, blah, blah, blah. But hey, who use it? Okay, now let's say that I have an API that let me access to LinkedIn and from which I can retrieve all my contacts and directly from my Outlook. And it goes directly either into my default contact folder from Outlook or from another contact. And let's say, Forget about LinkedIn. Let's talk about Facebook. Let's say that all my friends from Facebook, I'm a, I'm a company that is doing advertisement or marketing, and I want to send a newsletter to all of my, all of my contacts from Facebook. Then directly from your Outlook, without changing your interface, without changing the interface that people have been accustomed to since 1995 or even earlier, they are able to be connected to a wide range of services. So, hey, this is just the emerged part of the iceberg. We can connect it to whatever we want. At the moment, the probably only challenge is that the technology requires you yeah, to be a geek and to write in C. I mean, to do C programming. So at some point, we will need to evolve and go to other languages. We have already tried some attempts, but now with Zentil, I mean, we have the ability to go way further. I mean, to do such crazy things within the next month and, the, and within the next years. So hey, stay tuned. Okay, so 
Now, if we just rewind, we were talking about this uh, a small business server from Microsoft. Now, what is the small business server from Zentio? Well, we have Ubuntu as the operating system. We have some before that provide a centralized file system and also the Active Directory. And hey, last component, we have OpenChange, which is an Exchange compatible, Microsoft Exchange compatible server. And you don't need any connector. You don't need any additional fee. You don't need to pay for any Cal. I mean, it just worked out of a box. So what is the current status? Because, uh, well, I'm not from marketing, uh, I'm not from sales, so at some point I should stop selling dreams and, you know, show exactly what we have. So, as the favor of open change, I've been doing a lot of installation. Definitely, I'm not the best sysadmin ever. Uh, I'm, well, probably barely good, uh, but, you know, I know how to deploy systems, but that's not my specialty. I don't know all of the little tricks. I, I led that for specialists. I mean, this is why the word is for. We need to combine talents. So well, when I was doing the development, knowing open change to the very, very inch, to the very, I mean, each line of the code, it took me up to three hours to deploy the entire system. I have my Ubuntu configured with network configured, I mean, the base system. And I have the software installed, but nothing configured. Configuring dev code, configuring postfix, configuring the databases, configuring Samba, configuring open change, uh, provisioning the, active, the user in the Active Directory, all that takes me three hours. So yeah, probably two hours because at some point, uh, for I'm just taking this script and I'm copy past and I have my dev code com uh, configuration and I just change it. But still, I mean, probably not the best ever. We have turned this free house basic installation into a three minutes advanced deployment. I mean, that's exactly what we've been doing for the last three months. We have been turning a technology into a product. Because the technology exists. I mean, if you've been looking over the web, looking for Microsoft Exchange Server compatible server for Linux, yeah, probably we would have been tracking you with the Google tracking stuff and we say, hey, oh, this is the keyword, uh, we need to add a news. No, we won't add news because we are only geek and on the openchange.org website, we have very, very few news. It's just like, we have this new release, we have this new release, we are going to this conference. Anyway, this three minutes advanced deployment is exactly where we got to. And this is what you can test out of the box here and now. So let's have a look at the OpenChange provisioning. Because we have two different ways of provisioning, ex, uh, provisioning open change. I even make, you know, I even make the, the lapsus with exchange because we are so compatible. Mm. Um, about the provisioning, we have two different ways. The first one is, this is the first exchange uh, server in the organization, so-called exchange. In this case, this open change server is going to be linked to uh, Samba 4 that is deployed as a primary domain controller. We have no exchange server in the, uh, in the domain ever, and we have this standalone installation. What happened here is that with that, we just configured the first organization and the first organizational unit, and we just decide whether or not we want further user uh, to be enabled as being open change users. And we just click provision, and it will do all the magic. It will update the Samba schema with all the open change requirements that add all of the exchange classes. Um, it will uh, create the databases that are required for some of the open change magic to do the links. And in the end, you end up with a system that is working. And the next one is what if you already have an exchange server in the organization? Not as long ago, it was not really possible to do that because the Samba 4 replication code was not enable, was not working with Exchange Schema in uh, in the remote Active Directory. So, as of now, it's possible. So, what we've been doing, yeah, what we've been doing, is just provide this ability to have this additional Exchange server, which means that the schema is replicated from the primary domain controller uh, uh, with your Windows server and an Exchange, and gets to Samba where we replicate and OpenChange directly use these classes. And you have the ability to set this server as the primary Exchange server, so if you want to do a smooth migration. Now, let's be honest, this feature is quite alpha for the moment. So please don't use it in production system and don't send me just like an email. Hey, you said that during the summit. We are working on that. I mean, we are already providing it, which means that in the scenarios that we have been testing, we know that it's working. Now we need more time, and this is why it's called a technology preview. It's because we need more time to do it properly and to cover all the cases and to get sure that, hey, we won't break anything. So 
Another thing that we've been working on is uh, webmail. And so we decided to work open uh, Runcube because we already had Runcube in Zentral and uh, uh, because it's doing a great job with emails and, uh, and uh, with the uh, LDAP, when the LDAP backend. So the only thing that we've been adding and something we've been working on is um, we have this libmappy that lets you access your Exchange server from anywhere in the world uh, and is basically available on any Linux distribution. Would it be Red Hat or would it be Ubuntu uh, or would it be uh, uh, whatever? In any case, we have been working on bindings that let you access your calendar and your contacts directly from Runcube. So we've been developing the plugin. We've been reusing existing plugin and modify them to use the PHP bindings that have been developing on site uh, with Zentil and that will be redistributed to the open change, uh, to the open change code so we can have then merge stream, we can do the merging. I mean, have this proper open source policy that, that, we, are, that we are looking for. So, it m in the end, it means that when you are using Runcube, you have emails that goes directly to IMAP, you have the contacts from the global address list that are fetched directly from LDAP, the LDAP interface from the Samba Active Directory, you have the contacts that are stored, that are fetched directly through an open change server directly into the backend, so it's transparent from the backend, and we also have the calendar that are fetched this way. Another thing that we are working on still alpha, but still working, starting to, it's to upgrade uh, your system from an existing exchange server to an open change Zentil open change server. In this case, what we want to migrate are uh, the, the, primary, the, the primary objective is to migrate the emails, the contact and the calendars. And to do this smooth upgrade, which means that you still get your data on your exchange server and your exchange server can, by the way, be a hosted exchange server. It can be remote or it can be in the local environment. If it's on the local environment, then we'll be using the Kerberos, uh, the Kerberos tickets and, uh, and an account to just uh, connect on behalf of the user and do the migration. If it's, a, if, it's a remote, if it's a remote system, then for the upgrade, we'll just be using the NTLM SSP or a basic authentication, depending on what kind of, what kind of, uh, uh, of a remote uh, remote hosting provider do you have for the moment it's only limited to the hosting provider that provides you an open vpn account but we already do have the technology to do that through outlook anywhere uh, which is the next step and which we are going to integrate in the next future so for those who don't know what outlook anywhere i'm just going to explain in the future goals of, of the project so for the preliminary we have a preliminary version that is available here okay about the quality actions, that is something I've been desperately looking for when I entered Zentil. Just like, hey, Zentil, can you help me with quality actions? Because that is not a one-man effort. So what we were looking for is that in OpenChange, we do have this test suit, bad guarantee that we are able to connect to an exchange server and, uh, or to an OpenChange server and blah, 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 and test is the API still working? But we didn't have any functional regression test, which means that from one commit to the other, it's extremely difficult to get sure that we have not broken something. You know, just like, hey, this feature was working, it's not working any longer. So we've been reusing an infrastructure from, uh, from that has been developed by the Samba project, which is called WinTest, and that will let you, let you deploy several virtual machines, configure it in some state, run scenarios, and then get the result and check if it's working or not. So that was for all, uh, all that is with regards to Zentral server connecting as a, a Samba domain controller to an existing, uh, to an existing uh, Windows server. And for the moment, the configuration we have, are, uh, we have a, a set of config configuration. We are going to extend the number of scenarios. But what was missing is, hey, how do you test a UI? How do you do automated tests of a UI? How do you do that without having slaves that are uh, behind a computer and do click, click, click and have this scenario and they need to get sure that it's working? Because uh, we are 21st century. I mean, 1995 is over. We need to find an automated way to do that. So to do that, we've been using SQL, which is uh, an, autom an automated way of scripting things. It's really nice, and Julio, uh, Julio will be presenting that in the uh, next presentation about uh, win test and things like that. So really nice. And the thing that is interesting is here, we have started to deploy scenarios with Outlook 2003, Outlook 2007, and Outlook 2010. And I will show you the video tomorrow during the workshop so you can see a bit what it's like and what we are looking for. 
And obviously, uh, the environment is using through OpenStack, so we can do the automatic deployment, the scale, and uh, get into configuration state. OK, um, the bugs and limitation about all the features that we've been, we've been talking about. Because, yeah, uh, there's a bright sun, but still there are some limitations. I mean, let's just, be, let's just be honest about the limitations that we do have and we are aware of. The first one is that the upgrade process is, at the moment, limited to contact and calendars into their default folder. It's not a restriction about the code that we have. It's because we are depending. I mean, the OpenChain stack is a very complex piece of software that integrates numerous projects, Zentil, OpenChain, Samba, and also the Sogo people for the back end and, and all what we have behind. So at some point, finding the, the correct way of synchronizing all of this takes time. And uh, well, takes time is what we were missing during the last three months. We've been working like, uh, uh, like crazy. So yeah, it's not exactly working as we would have expected. Uh, other you know stuff, minor stuff with with emails. That basically the, the the technology that we we have integrated is something I developed back in 2007. So it's great if you want to do backup and restore on the same server. But uh, if you want to export the information and and import the information on an, on completely different server with maybe another with a different name and different organization unit and the user doesn't exist then it starts to show some limitations so we need to think about hey how we would like to do that how can we work around in a way that it scales up so maybe the technology we have today is something that we are going to get right away in, within the next three months and come with something better that depends other thing is that well, as said the uh, additional exchange server world is still in two very alpha stage so wait a bit or do that in a testing lab and well we would really like you to test in into a testing lab and just tell us hey this this is not working this is the problem i'm having uh, uh this is the error message i'm getting any help i mean anything that can help us improving and and getting 100 percent uh, compliant is really is really helpful and finally, the Runcube webmail is currently a bit slow because the PHP binding are establishing a MAPI connection with either a, a remote exchange server or an open chain server, which means that it has this, all of these TCP transactions, so it's not direct access to a database. It directly goes to, uh, to an endpoint mapper on Samba on a remote server, then connect, establish the connection, open the mailbox, go to the correct folder, then get the, the hierarchy, do the mapping, get the data. That takes time. But that is good. I mean, for people that are using a webmail for small business server, probably with some improvement, some tiny improvement over the next three months, we can come to something really nice. Just like, you know, get HTML5 uh, uh, offline browsing so you can just store the, the data locally or keep the session among the different operations, you know, stuff like that. Okay, let's talk about, uh, well, yeah, this is the goal. We have turned the technology into a product. But let's see what's coming next. So the future in scheduling. Uh, the first one is that uh, if you are working with Outlook 2007, that is a feature that got integrated as of Outlook 2007, which are the auto-discovery protocols, which means that when you are configuring your account for the very first time, uh, it uh, just asks you for your name, your email, and your password. And then the, it automatically goes to the server, try to do some uh, resolution, go to a web service, and try to get your account from there. That is something that we already have, the technology is there, it's just that for this feature, we have been focused on Outlook 2003. Why, to, why Outlook 2003? Because as of the 8th of April 2014, Microsoft Exchange 2003 and Microsoft Outlook 2003 are going to get to the end of life, end of support. So either you are migrated to something different or you migrate to Zentio. For Outlook 2007, it's another deadline, but not that far. This is why we are doing things in order. So, uh, the auto, this, auto, this auto discovery services is going to be integrated. Then we have the Outlook Anywhere. So this Outlook Anywhere is just like the Microsoft way of not using OpenVPN or trying to provide a way to, to let you access to your Exchange mailbox through HTTP, uh, using HTTP as a transport layer and putting MAPI into that. So, I mean, there's no magic into that. It's just like HTTP, just like a, a, a magic bubble. And inside the bubble, you have the MAPI. So, but still, we needed to implement that. And we have it as of today. And that is also the default mechanism from Microsoft Exchange 2013, which means that any client that is not compatible with this technology or by default try to connect using the usual MAPI connection, it's not going to work. 
So we needed to have that. Okay, about the Outlook anywhere, there are two sides. We have the server side and we have the client side. The server side is uh, the way that we are going to provide to Microsoft Outlook clients a way to connect. This is already on the roadmap, it's going to be implemented. The other way, uh, I mean, is going to be deployed as part of the Zentio Open Change package. The other one is the client side. We have been working on providing the support for the, NTS, the NCAC and HTTP. Okay, this is the barbarian name. Uh, it just means uh, we are providing the RPC over HTTP support, and this is some code that we have been adding to Samba. So we still do have some review. It's already on a public branch. You can test it. It's working fine. It gives Open Change the ability to connect to Exchange 2013 server. So it's working out of the box. Cool. So why we want to integrate it? Because most of the hosting providers are giving customers an access only to uh, Outlook Anywhere access over HTTP rather than the old method which is over OpenVPN. So in this case, we will be able to help the user migrate from their Exchange, whatever version that is providing Outlook Anywhere to Zential OpenChange. And also to the cloud. I mean, obviously not, not just only hosting provider, also cloud provider, because the interface that they are providing is exactly the same. Okay, now about the schedule. Uh, we, uh, sch we plan to have a technology preview too, available by December. And by December, be also able to provide the first version into, uh, I mean, to push the first preliminary version into the commercial edition. So we would have the first version ready. And we also hope to have uh, the Outlook 2007 automated quality assurance ready uh, for, for December. And the next one is in April, April, when uh, our Microsoft uh, Exchange 2003 and Outlook 2003 comes to an end to have the service pack two and get the Outlook 2010 automatic QA. Now, before the question, something that is really obvious is that we need to get aligned with what, what people are expecting. I mean, we are technologists and we are providing a product. And to this regard, at some point, our vision can be a bit scrambled with what the market expects, with what uh, uh, small, medium business or large customers expect. And s what we expect from you, people right here, that are going to test open change out of the box when you get out of this room, because we have all of this live demo where you can test it. It's just to say, hey, you are missing this feature. In my opinion, it's, it is extremely important, or it is Oh, it's not that important, I can live without that. We just want to get sure that before we get to the commercial edition, we are matching the requirements, the requirements of the industry. But hey, we are providing a version, we have a lot of features, but is it enough? It's not up to me to tell, it's up to you to say whether the product match your expectations or not. So thank you. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what happened with Active Sync? Okay, Active Sync is another piece. Um, for the moment, it's not on the roadmap. It's not that we are not going to to develop it. I mean, you can already have Active Sync if you want, because through the uh, Sogo, uh, uh, the Sogo groupware, that is the underlying uh, piece of uh, where OpenChange store the data, where it's using as a storage backend. You can deploy the ZPush version 2. Uh, I think we have d been doing, I don't want to say, you know, mistake, but basically it's based over the Zarafa ZPush thing and it provides active thing. Whether it's good enough or not, not me to tell, but I think there are some progress to do here. So definitely, at some point, this is something we're going to have to look ourselves rather than depend on other people. But I just don't know when, uh, and for the moment, it's not scheduled. It's not scheduled. <laughs> yeah, working this time. <laughs> yeah. Um, just a sec, please. Um, I'd just like to know with the uh, up upgrade tool. Yep. Is it only uh, with Microsoft that it that that it migrates? For the moment, but For I know what you're thinking, and uh, yes, obviously at some point we we think about it too. But it's just like Voldemort. 
We don't know. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yes, yes. At some point, because we are offering the two, we are offering both Zarafa in our edition and Open Change. At some point, if we have customers that want to 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 migrate from Zarafa to Open Change, yes, we are going. We are going to work on on migration tools. Okay, because so far, uh, from what we've spoken about, the op Open Change sounds way better than Zarafa. Oh, thank you. <laughs> And um, just my last one, um, Outlook Anyway, it sounds really, really exciting. So um, I've worked with customers in the past where, so how am I going to work it when I, when I get to a customer and they say they want to um, get their, whatchamacallit, when they say they, they want to use the, the, the Outlook Anyway. Mm -hmm. So do they go into the Options tab uh, in their Outlook client, and then from there, uh, just direct everything to... Uh okay, so we have different ways of doing that. I mean, I, I am offering different scenarios here. First case scenario, these are customers that are part of a Windows domain, and so the Windows workstation are part of a domain. To this regard, it should theoretically be possible with a GPO to update the Outlook configuration to automatically include the uh, uh, fallback to, uh, fall to, uh, to Outlook anywhere. Um, Otherwise, if they are not part of a domain, yeah, obviously you're going to have to uh, update the configuration. But as starting with Outlook 2007, it's really trivial. So, you know, there, there are still ways to do that. But programmatically, with a GPO, it should be possible. Okay. No, thank you. Thanks. Other questions? Jota, do we have time? Uh, we have five more minutes. <laughs> More questions yep. over there? Um, this is actually a question from uh, one of my employees back in Scotland who's been doing a bit of testing on your, your systems. Um, he was wondering if uh, the initial release um, with open change in it will have similar functionality to the open change client as it is at the moment um, will it include things like folder sharing and permissions management task assignment and management of server server features such as out of office auto reply and so on yeah because I mean all of these features you need to make the difference between the open change code the open change server that is doing the mappy translation logic and the Sogo backend or any other backend that is at the moment doing the uh, uh, this kind of providing this kind of feature. We are trying to migrate. I mean, in, in the long term, we would like every, all the knowledge to be into the open change server, so backends can just be just like real storage backends. So, at the moment, all the features that are available from the Sogo backend will be available, which means obviously. Um, I'm unsure about the out of office thing, but definitely about file sharing, about permissions, about ACLs in general, uh, ACLs, um, um, all of this kind of feature. I don't think we have quota implemented, but uh, on most of the feature, they will be available. At some point, obviously, we need to come up with a complete list of all the detailed feature. But hey, we are talking about a client where a guy can write a macro and say, hey, your code is not working with my macro. I mean, your server is not working with my macro. Um, what we are looking for, I mean, to be very honest, let's say that we have a 300, uh, uh, 300 employees company. On the 300 com employees, I mean, on these 300 employees, you probably going to have 20 persons that are really using Outlook. The other are presumably just, you know, fetching emails, uh, sometime create a calendar, but not re really using it. These are the 20% that we are looking for. I mean, making happy. So on this 20%, you're probably going to have 5% or 10% or, or of these 100 of this 20. So let make like a 2% in the end. 2% of the customer that say, but are really using Outlook for very, very advanced features, for you know, very, particular, very particular purposes. For the moment, this is out of the scope of what we try to provide. What we are looking for is the common set of features that let you run a group where, I mean, let you run a Microsoft Exchange server compatible server in your enterprise. But what, you're pro what you are uh, uh, talking about are definitely part of the features that we are looking for. So will the initial release be part of it? 
as much as it's available today because we are working on integration, do testing. So I can't make any promise. I can just say that we are going to make the best we can. Fair enough. Thanks. And another question here. We have more. More questions? Yep, yep. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my, my question is about front-end. You, 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 you said that OpenChange is used to for, for using Outlook, but mm -hmm. what about other mail, mail clients? Well, you have clients on, on Linux. I mean, MAPI compatible clients. Basically, we are talking about MAPI, but okay. I mean, okay. if we look at all of the group solutions solution that are on the market, I'm sorry, but none of them has taken over the exchange market. Which means that, I mean, the user we are targeting are really the Microsoft Outlook user. Yes. But in the end, they are compatible clients. I mean, they are a common line clients. We also have tools that let you convert your emails to inbox. If that is, you know, if you are still using Pine or, or, or other, or, you know, uh, old fashioned, uh, old fashioned but really useful uh, 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 mail clients. And we have Evolution Mappy. We have been trying to, you know, have uh, work with other, uh, other, clients, uh, other people, uh, other companies that are providing clients or other foundations, uh, they were not interested. Mm -hmm. So in the end, we come up here, this is what we get. I mean, if a sysadmin does to, um, so needs to work in a company who all people use Outlook mm. and he, uh, he, was, he wants to, um, to use another, another that can have the same compatibility, same functionality. You have the run cube. The run cube. Yes. And, and I mean, if you're looking for emails, emails, whatever IMAP client, because it's stored into IMAP. It's just for the contacts, only for the contacts and calendars that have the personal contacts and personal calendar. So basically, let's say only calendar, because if you're the sysadmin, you will only be using the contacts that are on the global address list, which you will access directly from, your, uh, from the Active Directory, so through the LDAP interface. So what you are really interested in is into the calendar thing. Well, if it's only calendar, I think that a webmail is a, is you know, an affordable choice. Maybe not the better, but an affordable in a, in, in a, first, in a first time. Okay, thank you. We have uh, three, four more minutes. Really? Uh, <laughs> three, three, two. <laughs> uh, I think that there's one more question over there, so yeah. le let's. Me again. <laughs> and the micro still works. <laughs> How <laughs> amazing. <can> I say? <laughs> um, okay, Right. Um, so with OpenChange, uh, mm -hmm. will it uh, manage my calendaring? So from the work go, um, I'm limited to the number of calendaring and contacts that I can uh, migrate over. Why is that? No, no, no. I'm just asking because oh, no, no limitation. No limitation. No so limitation. the current calendaring I have my messages. Despite the size of my my inboxes in my in my infrastructure, mm -hmm. I can just move that all across emails, contacts, the entire group with scenario. Remember alpha stage for the migration tool. <laughs> so you know if you're asking me to make a commitment here, I can just say uh, you know uh, we are uh, we are going to provide whatever we can and we are going to improve. But definitely, what we are looking for is scalability. So if if you tell me that hey. I have, uh, because I mean, a, a small business server is probably going to get, I mean, a 25 company. Let's say we have uh, more of a one gigabyte, one gigabyte by customer. It's few, but I mean, for, for decent usage, you know, if you remove the old items and stuff like that. So it means that we would have 25 gigabytes to migrate. Well, uh, I think the current solution may show the limitation at some point because the underlying system that we are using, you know, is, uh, is converting all of the exchange messages into text do the first transaction and then migrate them, uh, upgrade them to, to the open change server. So there may be some latency. There are things that are still missing, but nothing that is, you know, nothing that is a technology blocker or that can't be integrated. So uh, the thing is, if you have, I mean, if you have this production system with one terabyte or, or, or 500 gigabytes of data, uh, then yeah, I would say that at the moment, the technology we are providing is not scalable at that point. But 
it's not a blocker. Still, it's not a blocker. We already have the alternative, the alternative solution. We already know where we want to head to, depending on, on depending on the requirements, depending on what people really want. If everybody say, oh, no, 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 forget about 25 gigabytes. Uh, we want the 500, the 500 gigabytes. Then in this case, it's obvious that we need to reorient the technology choice to something different. But we have three months roadmap with, uh, you know, remember really strategy yeah, area. Yeah. So, you know, we can make adjustment and, and test and test and test until it's, it's suitable. Okay. So for now, it's just, um, okay, when is the release date? Oh, the release date? Yes. Tomorrow. Oh, happy, happy days. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Okay, so we've run out of time, <laughs> I think. Oh, okay. Um, it's time to go for lunch, and, and thank you very much, Julian. Thank you. It was a great talk.